Chapter 14 Wolf uttered another menacing growl, baring his jagged teeth. The fur on his back stood up stiffly, his legs tensed as preparing for an attack. The sound of cackling twigs made me rise my eyes. I saw a gray figure darting behind the wall weeds on the other side of the bog. Who, who is that? Will whispered. I started to look ahead, unable to speak. It's that, Will started. Yes, I managed to to choke out. It's him, the swamp hermit. I dropped quickly to my knees, hoping to keep out of view. But has he already seen us? How long how he been there from the other side of the bog all along? Will must have been sharing my thoughts. Has that weirdo been spying on us? He demanded, huddling besides me. Beside me, Wolf uttered a quiet growl, still frozen in place, ready to attack. Keeping low, I scooted closer to the the dog, for protection. I guess. I watched the strange man made his way through the weeds. His long white hair was wild, straining and straight out around his face. He kept glancing behind him as he walked, as if making sure he wasn't being followed. He carried a brown sack uh, over one shoulder. He turned his gaze over to our direction. I dropped down to lower, trying to hide behind Wolf, my heart pounding. Wolf hadn't moved. But he was silent now. His ears are still pulled back. His lips are still open like a soundless snarl. What are those dark stains in front of the swamp hermit's grody shirt? Blood stains? The shiver of fear ran down my back. Wolf has started straight ahead without blinking, without moving a muscle. The swamp hermit disappeared behind the tall weeds. We can't, we couldn't see him, but we could hear his footsteps crunching over the dead leaves of fallen twigs. I glanced over at Wolf. The big dog shook him himself as if shaking the swamp hermit from his mind. His tail wagged slowly. His body relaxed. He uttered a some soft whimpers as he was telling how scared he has been. It's okay, boy. It's okay, boy. I said quietly. I rubbed his fur against the dog's head. He stopped whim- whimpering and licked at my wrist. That guy is creepy, Will exclaimed, climbing slowly to his feet. He even scared my scared the dog. I said, petting the wolf some more. What do you think he had in a snack, in a sack? Probably someone's head, Will said, his dark eyes filled with horror. I laugh, but I stopped that I see that Will wasn't joking. Everyone says he's a harmless, uh, says he's harmless, I said. He had all blood all over him from in front of his shirt, Will said in the, with the shoulder. He scratched his short and dark hair nervously. The sun faded quickly as clouds rolled over the sun. Long shadows crept over the bog. Uh, the stick that Will had thrown had disappeared, sunk into the thick, murky water. Yeah, let's get let's get home. I suggested. Yeah, okay. Will agreed quickly. I called out to Wolf, who was still exploring the tall weeds. And then we turned in to make our way back along the twisting dirt path. A soft breeze fluttered the trees, making the palm leaves scrape my the clutter. Tall ferns shivered in the wind. The shadows grew deeper and darker. I could hear Wolf behind us. I could hear his body brushing through the low shrubs of the weeds. We are near, nearly to where the trees ended, and the flat grass leading to the backyards began 
We already out of the swamp. They will stop suddenly. I saw his mouth dro drop with horror. I turned to follow his gaze. Then I uttered a shocked cry and covered my eyes shut for the gruesome sight.